Hey folks, today we'll be going over building snow anchors on the Western Mountain Rescue Team. We use snow anchors for luring individuals off snowy mountainsides or frozen waterfalls. Multiple considerations need to be taken into account when building snow anchors, including snowpack, weather, and temperature. Today we'll be going over three different snow anchors. First, the picket. Second, the tea trencher dead man. And third, the bollard. Remember, before building a snow anchor, it's always smart to consider using a tree or other natural anchor. For today is the picket. Pickets are snow stakes in the T or V shape that range approximately one to three feet in length. There are multiple considerations we want to take into account when placing a picket. We want a very dense spring or maritime snowpack. So today we're in a snowbank to help simulate that. When placing a picket, you want to place it approximately 10 degrees past perpendicular so the T or V can catch the downhill snow. In this situation, in this snow, I can push it down with my hand, which means the snowpack here is probably not strong enough to hold this picket, but it's what we have the best to work with this time of year. Ideally, you should have to hammer your picket down with something. The days of an axe works well. Once your picket is hammered in, clip the top pole, and that's how you place a picket. One other consideration when placing a picket is making sure we're not placing too many of them too close to each other. They create a cone V-shaped force beneath them and can disturb the snowpack when placing another one. So you wanna make sure they're at least three plus feet apart from each other and wanna consider using a tea trench or dead man instead. So the next snow anchor we'll be going over today is the dead man or tea trench anchor. The dead man or tea trench anchor is a bit more versatile than the picket. It can be made in a variety of snowpacks. In a less dense snowpack, you'll be burying it deeper. In a more dense snowpack, you don't have to bury it quite as deep. I've left the snow beneath me undisturbed, as disturbing that could create a less strong anchor. So, when digging the tea trench, start by digging a trench in the shape of a tea. You'll be placing your ski in this trench. So now I have the first part of our tea dug. Notice how the wall facing downhill is flat and smooth. We want it to be flat and smooth so as much surface area can come in contact as possible. Now, now we're going to be placing the ski in there, so I want to be making sure my brakes are up so that's not disturbing the anchor at all. It also skis are sharp and you have edges, so we want to use some sort of edge protection. In this case we're using one of our rope bags. It doesn't need to be extravagant, just as long as it's protected. So, you can see now that this ski is shoved in there and placed so it's smoothly against our wall. Next, we're going to need to build the bottom part of our tee. So, to do this, you might need to take your ski back out. Just want to make sure it fits well in there first. Remember where that binding was, because you are girth hitching right in between that binding. And you're going to want to dig out, and I recommend digging upwards, so you're not disturbing that snow below. So now we have the lower part of our tee. So 
so now this is an anchor should we send the clip to so we have our over here and we'll be girth hitching around this edge protection set up out there. So, with the T-trench, making sure our ski is nice and parallel and that there's a lot of surface contact within the trench, that your cord or whatever you've girth hitched around your ski to come out, that the T is coming out so when it comes out of the snow at the bottom it is even with the ski so you want to be going downhill so notice how I've dug all of this oh, there you are, uh, out this T so it comes out straight so it's putting the forces on the ski in the same direction and that is not just coming up and out because it was coming up and out it could pull that ski out of the snow So now our T trench is almost complete. One other idea you want to keep in your back of your mind when digging T trenches is where are you going to be equalizing that anchor to? So if you're building two T trenches and equalizing them with each other, make sure that the T, the top of the T is oriented in the correct direction so you can achieve that equalization. Last and most importantly, you need to bury your tea trench. In some instances, we'll bury it and pack it down. So, let's get to it. So now I'm standing on top of our completed T-trench anchor. We have our ski buried underneath and our cord coming out here. And we can now clip in to the carabiner down there. This is a very strong and secure anchor. We're in a dense springtime snowpack and this ski is not going anywhere. So the last anchor we'll be going over today is the snow bollard. The snow bollard can be used in a variety of conditions, but in conditions with less dense, drier snow, it's a lot more effort to make than if it was in wetter, denser snow. So let's get to it. A bollard is a teardrop shaped bit of snow with a mound in the middle of it. On a denser springtime snowpack, like we have now, you can dig your mound in the middle to be approximately three feet tall and in drier lighter snowpacks midwinter you might need your mound to be upwards of 10 feet tall the your teardrop should be six to eight inches wide and 12 to 18 inches deep and you'll be wanting to use some sort of edge protection to make sure your rope or webbing is not cutting into that teardrop so let's get to it start off We'll want to use the days of our axe or a shovel to
teardrop shaped mound of snow. Three to four feet high. Our ditch here is about 12 to 18 inches deep and a little bit wider than six to eight inches. Uh, that's okay for the width. So a couple more factors we want to take into account is whatever rope or whatever you use is going to want to cut into this snow. And we want to prevent it from cutting in. So a couple things you can do are place ice axes vertically around the edges of the snow. So if you put it on the shoulders of the bollard, we can be placing our axe into the snow to use as kind of an edge protection so that rope doesn't dig in. And either putting an axe on each shoulder, Whatever you might have uh, to create that. It's also good practice sometimes to be lining one of the end of the rope. You can use clothing or a rope bag. So over here I'm placing the top part of my shovel into the snow. Jesus, a piece of something, a piece of rope protection there. So now on both shoulders we have an axe or a shovel. Now to give the bollard even more strength, uh, for example when doing a, a lowering it's even practice to have some team members sit on top of the bollard. So next we're going to thread our rope through. You can use rope or a webbing. So now we have our completed bollard with our rope coming through it. Once again, snow bollards are an option for an anchor. It'd be much less inconvenient to using a tree. They are time consuming, but they are an anchor to have in your toolbox. Thank you very much, and I hope this rescue tutorial was helpful.